Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 21st, 2016. With summer coming up soon, I'm going to try to keep my TDD reports down to three subjects in around five to seven minutes max. Let's see if I'm actually able to do that. No guarantee, I'm just going to try. So this first one is from Popular Science. Which brands of hard drive are most likely to fail? A new analysis points fingers. They actually make it look, if you look at this chart, they make it look like Western digital drives are kind of falling behind and Seagate and Toshiba have kind of caught up and beat them as far as the reliability of hard drives. But if you actually look at this, and I'm really disappointed with popular science, they do not give you the margin of error and the sampling sizes are all over the place. For example, the Seagate drives from 2014 to 2015 actually got worse uh, from 9.98% to 10.68%, and then all of a sudden in the third year drops down to 2016, which gives me kind of pause to think about that. Now they're supposedly down to a 3.48% label, uh, label, 3.48% failure rate, and that's with a sample size of around 36,800. But if you actually look at the Western Digital drives, they're only doing a sampling for the year 2016 of 1,691 units, and for Toshiba it's 238 units. In fact, for the previous years, if you look at like the year before 2015, 47 units is all they're testing. So I don't think that really gives you a, a really reliable sampling size. And also, you got to take into the account that on the far left, the HGST drives, those are Western Digital drives. They make HGST drives, and they're some of the most reliable with around 1% or so failure rates. In fact, they've been really consistent the last three years, 1.10, 1.03, 1.03. 1 so these statistics, I would take them with about a grain of salt because I'm thinking with all things being considered myself and not giving statistics, I would almost guess that within the margins of error, all of these drives are pretty much equally reliable except in the case of the HGST drives because those are actually made specifically I think for server uses and heavy industrial uses so obviously if you build cheaper types of drives let's say for example I bought Western Digital Caviar drives too and the Caviar drives are the cheapest of the cheap you can't expect the same reliability as if you pay double for like a server type of drive so all things being considered I think this really popular science article kind of failed in my opinion and I'm kind of disappointed about it because I don't think it really gives you useful information. I think if you extrapolate out for error rates, uh, any of the hard drives at this point, I would say Seagate, Toshiba, Western Digital, unless I really wanted to pay extra and get an HGST drive, I would say you're probably doing good to buy any of them, or at least I can't tell from these uh, facts. I mean, if I let's say for example I did a hard drive test myself and I bought out I can't afford to buy a lot so I bought a, a sample size of like three Toshiba and three Western Digitals well if the three Toshibas ran fine for a year and one of the Western Digitals broke down in the year I can't reliably say that well they have a 33 percent failure rate because I might buy a hundred more samples and only have one fail so that means I'm somewhere in the range of between 33 percent and one percent with a huge margin of error who knows? I mean, you got to get bigger sample sizes than that. So, a bit disappointing from popular science. This one was sent from my friend John B., my trucker friend. Hubble snaps a fetching new portrait of Mars. For some of you who don't know, Mars is actually coming closer. It's going to be the closest. It's going to be in 10 years. Mars will make a close approach to Earth on May 30th, coming within 46.8 million miles. And I think this one, uh, yeah, this picture that I'm going to put up here, this is when it's within a distance of 50 million miles. So it's going to get a little bit closer. But this is actually one of the best pictures I've ever seen. And if you look at the white areas, most of those areas are actually clouds that you're seeing there on Mars. So uh, Mars, just like Earth, has a weather system, thinner atmosphere, but a, a definitely a weather system. And if you get a chance, if you have even a small telescope that can go maybe uh, 50 power or something like that and has a pretty, you know, decent set of optics, I think you can actually, you know, you'll actually be able to see the size of the disk. You'll see an orange type of a, a disk shape. Uh, not get as much detail as this, but obviously if you want the detail of Hubble, just uh, go and uh, click on, I'll, I'll put the link to the high resolution. I think it's 2000 by 2000 photograph on this, but this is excellent too. And as I've said before, if I ever could get the chance, not that they'll ever give it to me, but if I could ever get the chance to make a one-way trip to Mars, I would certainly do it. So NASA, if you're listening... And last up, this is from um, the Dumpster Divers website. This is posted by Josh K, and I'll have the YouTube video link on here, but I'm just going to go with the Discovery article about the same thing. Brewery makes edible six-pack rings. Anything we can do to get plastic out of the oceans, at least the non-biodegradable type, 
A group of beer makers in Delray Beach, Florida, north of Miami, has created a way to sell six packs with rings that are made of biodegradable and edible material. Saltwater Brewery now sells edible six pack rings using barley and wheat remnants from the brewing process. The company says, and there's a video below to watch too, between 40,000 and 110,000 metric tons of plastic from Americans ends up in the ocean every year, according to a study in science last year. Researchers said that plastic waste frequently comes from coastal areas, but some also makes its way through inland waterways to the oceans. Yeah, it, uh, it kills animals, it hurts. I, I mean, a lot of animals that eat plankton and stuff like that are ingesting plastic bits and thinking that they're full, you know, their stomach feels full, but it's from plastic bits. Uh, we, we're 10 years behind. We should have had biodegradable plastics 10 years ago. Um, all you can do is just, you know, make a law saying that, you know, you're, you're going to stop making this kind of polluting plastics that just never biodegrades and just say within the next year or so all the manufacturers have to go to biodegradable plastics. Yeah, maybe it'll raise the price about five cents or more per, uh, per item purchased, but we're, it's not like we get away with the cost anyway. By doing things cheap on the on the front end, you end up having all this expense in the back end of the plastic you have to clean up later that never biodegrades. So you can pay now a little bit or you can pay later a lot because trying to get the plastic out of the ocean, that's going to be quite an expense. So anyway, that's about it for this week. As usual, all the links to the articles down below. Thank you for everybody that's contributed. If you get a chance, stop by on Facebook. Just look for uh, the Dumpster Divers page, and we would be happy if you would join us there on the Dumpster Divers. we got a lot of people that post things on a regular daily basis, new science, new gadgets, stuff like that. So I will catch you next week.